Last we left off with the TV app mod, at least this particular iteration of it, the uh, drop-in version, um, I went ahead and installed it as if it were the um, just the regular drop-in version and not the TV app version, which is what I was supposed to have in that package, but it looked like they'd sent me the TV app version instead, so let's let's uh, let's get that hooked up and, and uh, see if we can't get some TV out working. Uh, so if you order a TV out kit, it's going to come with the same thing I showed last time, but you're also going to get one of these cables and a few extra wires. Um, this cable is just a regular composite out cable. You have your standard audio cables hooked up to a standard uh, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and then you have your video cable hooked up through the uh, link port connector. Uh, this is a custom cable. It only works with the TV out kit and there are two different versions of the TV out kit. Um, either a pin one kit or a pin three kit depends entirely on what vendor you get it from. Uh, and the wiring is not interchangeable between the two. Rather, you have to use the wiring that is designed for the cable you have. The kit itself doesn't care which wiring method you use. It's just you have to use either pin 1 or pin 3 depending on the cable you have. My particular cable is a pin 3 cable, uh, but I will be showing wiring for both. Let's go ahead and get this pulled apart here. And again, I already did the install for the backlight kit itself. Uh, you can check in the description or a link to that video if you want to see that process. Alright. I just want to take the screws out so I don't lose them. Alright, so the wiring here is actually going to be relatively simple. Uh, there are five wires we have to do, but depending on which method you're using, depends on uh, what that fifth wire connects to. I'm going to go ahead and pop that out. And just pull off that insulating material. And we need to pull this board out. So we absolutely do not want to do any soldering over the screen. We don't have to completely remove it, but it does need to not be resting on the screen. Okay. I need some wire now. And naturally, I set aside the wire, but I don't know what I did with all of it. It doesn't matter too particularly. Let me get some wire. I'll be right back. All right, so I've got some wire set aside now. Um, like I said, the kit does come with wire, um, so try not to lose it if you don't have any extra on hand that you can use. Let us go ahead and start soldering. I'm going to sit that in there just to keep this board off of the screen. I don't want to have to remove the touch sensors while I'm soldering. So this will be so much easier. Oh no! Okay, here we go. My 
I already have my capture set up so we can test so I can get some uh, footage once everything's all set up and my iron is or the HDMI cable for the capture is in the way of my iron We're going to wire up the select wire. Actually, I'm going to do, I'm going to solder them closest to the ribbon cable connector first, just because that'll be easier to manage. particularly nasty joint. Then I'm going to use these two black wires for ground and then AV. Not the best joints in the world, but it will be good enough for our purposes. I highly recommend trimming the leads shorter just for a cleaner install. But what we have will work. <clears throat> okay. We're just going to use the test pads. Why not? We will use TP9, which is up here. Oh, good lord. That nice and tinned, TP9, TP8, right over here. It's going to be one of those days, isn't it? Also need TP2 right here, and then for the last two wires, we'll uh, we'll get a little bit crazy with those. All right, <clears throat> so L goes to TP9. There we go. And select goes to TP2. Easy peasy. Now, real quick, I'm going to go ahead and swap out these buttons because I actually want to use these orange buttons on another build I'm doing later today. So I'm going to use the 
these black funny playing buttons that I had. Convenient. Black membrane. Need to sort these so I don't get them mixed up. Oh, but we need to do some soldering on this side. Okay, so first let me get these kind of routed. like that. And that will go nicely like that. And then this one was the ground. So this wire just needs to come over here, get flipped and soldered to that. I'm going to go ahead and get that trimmed. <laughs> yep, it's definitely going to be one of those days. Same thing here, but I'm going to cut this one a little bit longer just to help keep track. Do the ground wire last and the AV wire first but let's take a look at what we got here if you have the pin 1 cable your wiring your task is going to be to remove that EM3 component right there right behind the link port and let me show you how to do that just double check I've got that correct. Yep. So we can just hit both sides at the same time with our soldering iron and pull it off just like that. And we don't need that component. All we do all we need is for that component to be removed and then we fold it up and do the install like normal but instead we're going to solder our long wire our AV wire to pin one of the link port and that's down here in the bottom right Let me get this trimmed up this will go like that and just like that and then we just need to clean up our wire routing so that that's not sticking out as much and then that's it that's that's the wiring for the pin one method right there we wire up to pin one of the link port you can see it's labeled one two five six and then the middle are three and four 
and we just had to remove EM3 right there. Do note that if you are using a pin 1 kit, you will no longer ever be able to use any wireless adapters. They just won't work. These rely on uh, power from the Game Boy Advance, and pin 1 is the power port for the uh, link connector. So without power, this just won't work. You won't be able to use any other powered accessories like a uh, worm light, but with the internal backlit screen, that's probably less of a concern. Um, but we can use the pin three method since that is the cable that I have. I'm gonna go ahead and desolder that. I'm gonna rearrange this. I want to add my component back in. Try and work around everything. All right, it's a little crooked, but it's good enough. I don't think I'm in the proper mindset to get that soldered on straight anyhow. Close that up. Oh. The insulation film back in. And I'm actually going to route these wires to the right. Just to make sure they don't get pinched. might come back to bite me in the butt. But we'll work around it. All right, got the black buttons installed. Let's finish the wiring. So the ground wire, you can solder to. Why does that keep happening? Okay. This leg right here. Just get that nice and tinned. And this is for either method, not just pin three or pin one. Drop that right in there. wire in and then this guy goes to pin 3 so if we look at the labeling again you see we have 1 2 which is 1 2 which means this bottom middle one is going to be pin 3 so I'm gonna bring that down and route that over something like that but I need to get that tin first That should be it as far as the wiring goes. So let's get this thing reassembled. Let's try it out.
Alright, something ain't closing right up here, so I think I'm pinching a wire. It's the board itself that's not seated properly. And the problem is where I routed my wires. There we go. One of them was getting pinched. I'll fix that eventually. All right, so that still works. And then we should have Oh, there we go. Brightness controls through the buttons, just hold select, hit L and R, and then we should be able to hold select. No, I think it works better if you hold L and R and then hold select. Hmm, I was worried about that. All right, so there you go. Two, uh, two questions answered. Um, first thing is that the uh, TV out kit, if you get one that has the uh, TV encoder chip populated on that PCB, I discussed this in the other video, and you try and wire it up for TV out, doesn't appear it's going to work. It's probably disabled in firmware. Um, it's a bit unfortunate, but it is what it is. But there is your wiring. I'll be right back. Alright, I just wanted to verify that I was hitting the buttons correctly, because as you can see, my select button doesn't always work. Neither does my R button, but my L button is fine. Uh, you gotta hit them all pretty hard, you gotta hold them all for a few seconds, and then it's supposed to switch over, but indeed it does not. So, what we're gonna do, and I'm gonna do this off camera in the um, name of expediency, is I am going to swap out the kit that is in this Game Boy with the kit that is in this Game Boy because this is the one that I did originally. I kind of messed up the install on, but it uses the exact same LCD and it is the TV out version. So I'm just gonna pop these both open, do the old swap real quick. I'm also going to remove the touch sensors because I have decided that I don't want to use them anymore. I'll be right back. Alright, so I went ahead and ripped out the old one. I'll need to reuse this ribbon cable. And I got the new one soldered in. I did the wire routing a little bit different. I ended up using the CPU to help um, 
wrangle these wires a little bit. Um, I don't necessarily recommend it, but it is what it is. But I think my wiring ended up a lot cleaner. I also trimmed the leads on this end so that everything is nice and clean. And give me just a moment, I will reassemble this. I need to make sure that all of these wires clear these screw posts. This one especially, that one was pinched. Not terribly so, but it is what it is. I will be right back while I get this reassembled. Alright, so special note while you're reassembling, if your link port looks like this and it's not fully flush, it means your board is not sitting properly and something somewhere is getting pinched. Now if you look at my uh, L button here, you can see this wire is not clearing that screw post. So I'm going to try and gently nudge it over until it does. And something else is not clearing. I'm willing to bet. But still this one giving me trouble. It's probably best to have it go up and around the screw post, so I'm going to try that. Alright, so I've got it reassembled. I've got the new kit, even though it's the old kit. Installed, I got that swapped out. Uh, oh, I should have saved that. Oh well. Oh, that's a problem. So I think I have one of my wires pinched. Is it? Looks like just holding L and R is enough to uh, swap that over. Um, unless that's intended operation, but let us go ahead and plug this in and see how it looks. Now keep in mind on the output end of things, I have this plugged into a RetroTink. And it was on the wrong setting, but I've got all my working buttons, so let's, let's try a game, huh? I mean, I've done, I've done enough of these TV out kits at this point, I think, that you guys have a pretty good idea of what they look like on the output end of things. but it's always good to have some extra footage. Let me turn the volume up. I don't think I have my volume capture on. Um, at the very least, I don't have it outputting. I hope it's recording. But you guys know what Super Mario World sounds like. Ooh, that's not what I wanted to start. Nonetheless, audio is literally just two and a half or three and a half millimeter. There's no mod required for that. But try and run through here. Now do keep in mind that I am playing through the retro tink isn't adding any um I'm not going to say it's not adding lag, because it's impossible for that to be a part of the chain without adding lag. I will say, however, that it is likely adding an imperceptible amount of lag, and my particular problem right now is just that um, my $8 HDMI capture card that the RetroTINK is hooked up to adds a not insignificant amount of lag. I can play with lag. I'm pretty used to playing with input lag. Um, I used to work nights, and I used to play a lot of World of Warcraft. So, I would play on Australian servers, and I am not an Australian. So that meant, at minimum, 
every single time I was playing, I was getting like 200 MS ping. And I, you, you, you do that for enough time and you just get used to lag. Um, it also certainly helps that I am very, very familiar with Super Mario World, uh, especially this level in particular. So, yeah, there, there's some lag. There's definitely some lag. Uh, but again, that's from my capture card. Try not to judge it too much. The video quality of the capture card itself is actually pretty decent. Um, but, you know, y you get what you pay for. Like I said, it was like $8. I just got it on AliExpress. If you want, if you're actually interested in getting a capture card for your own purposes... Oh, bye Yoshi. Um, highly recommend one with pass-through. Mine does not have pass-through. Without pass-through, you're at the mercy of the uh, input lag of the capture card itself. But the reason I wanted to show this footage... Let's see what's in this box. Ah, Firefly. Is because I wanted to show you guys what composite looks like on a modern screen. And again, I have... I'm running this through a retro tink, so this is like best case possible as far as the uh, video quality goes. Uh, this would look fantastic plugged into a CRT. I don't have a CRT. I'm not getting a CRT. And even if I did have a CRT, capture of the CRT itself would be somewhat difficult. Um, it's composite. You, you, you've got to manage expectations for that. And I think I do this every time I pull out the retro tank, but I totally forgot to dismiss the menu. So now we get to stare at the input composite SDTV SDP 60 hertz label. You'd think after all this time I'd figure out what I'm supposed to do with this. Oh, fudge, I didn't mean to sh Oh well. That's Mario. You guys know Mario. Oh, oh no! Just because I'm familiar with the game doesn't mean I'm good at it. But, there you go. It's really not bad. Uh, let me try one more game just so that you guys have some uh, baseline, I guess. Oh, wait, no. We can't do that while the easy flash is starting up. Otherwise, we go into the uh, test mode and recovery mode and whatnot. Um, Pokemon Emerald. I mean, it's the same game I always test with. It's always good to have a baseline. There you go. Ta-da. The biggest possible, or the biggest actual issue with the composite out is that A, it's composite, so it's just the absolute lowest quality you can do as far as video signal goes on a wired connection. It sucks, but it is what it is. B, it is the wrong aspect ratio. So. My RetroTINK is treating it as a 4 to 3 signal, which it's not a 4 to 3 signal. The Game Boy Advance is a 3 to 2 aspect ratio device. So the length is three times the height. Well, no. Sorry. There are three times as many pixels along the length and two times as many pixels along the height. It's... I don't, I'm... I'm I'm butchering this explanation, but you you get what I'm trying to say. It's the difference between um, widescreen and standard aspect ratio. GBA is exactly halfway between the two. Um, 
if you have like a Surface Pro or something, one of the newer ones, that's a three to two device. You notice you watch widescreen content, it's got black bars. You watch standard screen content, it's got black bars. Same thing with the GBA, exact same aspect ratio. So on that note, if you have a Surface Pro and you're running emulation full screen, it's mint. Anyway, but yeah, so composite doesn't have a way to communicate aspect ratio. So whatever you plug it into, it just accepts the the default, uh, which if you're plugging it into a widescreen TV, the default is widescreen composite. If you're plugging it into a standard screen TV, the default is standard screen composite. There's just, that's, that's how composite works. Um, so yeah, as long as you're willing to accept the downsides of composite, this is perfectly fine. There's no, well, there is some frame dropping. Um, let me, I guess, let me, let me demo that. I'm gonna, can I, I, I can do that on the easy flash. Let's go into, my scrolling bars test, because that'll run through the emulator, which should be fine. And you can see how not exactly smooth that is, or how smooth it is. I can't tell because the capture's not as smooth as the actual, or the, the preview window is not as smooth as the actual capture. But it's, it's fine. It's certainly playable, but it's not perfect. There's definitely room for improvement. But the biggest problem itself is the composite footage, not or the composite output, not what is being done to the 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 signal to get composite. Uh, so once we have something that's uh, micro HDMI, uh, you know, once once we have something like that, I think it'll be a little bit better. But until then, this is what we have. I like it. I'm digging it. I probably won't use it but I still think it's cool as heck, especially since this is like a fully self-contained unit. I can just unplug this and switch it back over. And then I have a regular, perfectly working Game Boy Advance. And you can see the difference between the smooth smoothness of the capture and the actual internal display. The internal display is displaying that properly. The capture is not. But anyway, that's what we got. Uh, if you get one of these um, drop-in kits, they're not exactly drop-in despite what the manufacturer wants to call them, uh, and it does have the TV out chip, it looks like that's disabled in firmware, so it's kind of wasteful, but it is what it is. If you didn't order the TV out version, you shouldn't expect to be able to use the TV out function. Um, I thought I thought I would get lucky and uh, be able to do that. But looks like it's disabled in firmware, so you can't do that. But if you do have the TV out version, that's what you do. You got either pin one or pin three. Pay attention to what your seller tells you. If you get your kit through Retro Game Repair Shop, which this, both of these are actually through Retro Game Repair Shop, um, chances are pretty good you're gonna be using the pin three wiring, not the pin one but double check anyway and just because this came up in my GBASP video let us double check that the wireless adapter still works because I think they fixed it unfortunately it looks like my link oh there it goes Yeah, so we should be good because on the older versions of the kits, the um, just wiring it up to pin three would cause an error with the wireless link port or with the wireless adapter. So we should be good. Uh, and now that this is wired up, I think I think we're good to go. Let me. Oh, there it goes. Error occurred. Oh wait, but that might have been because I jiggled this. Give me a moment. We'll try it out. I, I can't, I can't not. I've got another GBA right here anyway, so I'll be right back. The biggest problem with this test is that the link ports on my GBAs are so sketchy. That even though this one should be perfectly working, it's 
not working. There we go. That one's already in the link room. So on this one, we should see two people. There's the other one. And on the other one, we see the other person. So yeah, they fixed that with this kit too. It looks like it was only the first generation kits that kind of suffered with this issue. But watch as I set this down and it airs out. Yeah. <laughs> Did that one air out? No. But yeah, sketchy link ports. It has more to do with the uh, link port itself than any software. This thing has a funny playing kit and there's never been any link port problems with the funny playing kits um, because they have never modified any of the link ports. But it looks like the older TV out version kits with the 9380 LCD may or may not be fixed going forward they should be but this particular kit is one of the first versions of the drop-in lcd tv out version so we shouldn't have any link port problems with any of those kits um, but there you go there's your there's your tv out both your pin one and pin three again follow your seller's recommendations for wiring and you should be good to go thanks for watching guys and I'll uh, catch you next time. And big thanks again to Retro Game Repair Shop for sending both of these kits my way to check out. I will send, I'll put some links in the description if you want to check out the videos I did on either of these kits. And um, I'll link straight to the store if you want to grab one. Uh, otherwise, have a fantastic night.